that offends me. You have no idea how many times I've heard a religious person say this uh, in some way, shape, or form in response to something I have said. The most ridiculous is when I simply state something uh, about like the contradictions in the Bible, for example. If I point out a contradiction in the Bible, they're like, oh, that offends me. Really? So listening to reason offends you? Listening to a logical statement offends you? If that's the case, shouldn't you question your religion and not my statement? Things that really bug me about religion and religious people specifically is how easily they get offended by things. Me as an atheist, someone without religion, atheism is not a religion, I don't get offended by things very easily when it comes to religion. When someone says, there is a God, I'm not offended. I just simply say, okay, prove it. If someone says, atheism is stupid because you can't, there's no moral system. I'm like, okay, well, um, here's this, this, and this. That's why it's not true. I don't get offended. People make claims like this all the time. I'm on YouTube, uh, you know, an hour or so a day, just watching videos, looking through comments, watching uh, specifically debates more, uh, more than likely, and then reading through the comments afterwards. When I see a comment that says, oh, wow, God is real. I know for a fact God exists. Uh, it's so stupid that atheists don't believe in God, yada, yada, yada. I don't care. I just scroll on. Most of the time, that person is a troll. Sometimes they're honestly believing that, which just shows the depth of doc indoctrination that people go through at such a young age, which is honestly scary to believe. But something shouldn't offend you because someone's just saying something about your religion. The fact that you are offended by that is most likely derived from the fact that you're taught not to question things about your religion. You're taught that this is true, this is where you came from, this is what created you, these are the moral values you have to follow. Oh, and even though there's no evidence, you cannot question it. And anyone who does is a heathen and deserves to die and be made fun of and uh, any other bad thing you can think of. Can't you see that there's a problem in that thought process? The reason why we accept science so quickly and so strongly as a fact and what to uh, trust in is because science questions itself. When someone uh, submits a theory or submits an, a hip, uh, I cannot talk. So when someone submits a hypothesis, scientists jump to test that hypothesis. They want to test that. They want to prove that wrong. Yes, you heard me. They, they want to prove that wrong. Because if they don't, then it's just a, a fact. But they want the accurate information. They need to know if something is true or not. If they're, like aim, if they're aiming for something to be true, then there are always ways you can go, you can bend the data or something to make it look true. But if you aim for it to be false, to find the truth, then you're going to be so much more successful in finding the truth. Why do I accept evolution as a fact? Aside from the fact that it's, you know, a fact, is because I know there has been so much research done on evolution. Different testing, I don't even know the depth to it. So many experiments and uh, looking at things, viewing it, just studying it. And to come up with the conclusion that is a, it is a fact, after you go through all that process, the scientific process, you better believe that is a fact. You need to understand the depth at which they test things before they uh, say it is a scientific theory or fact. I urge anyone who questions the Big Bang or evolution or any other scientific theory to look at the scientific process, to go through the scientific process as it's described and find truth in something. 
If someone were to run a test on if there was a God or not, obviously it would come back negative because there is no falsifiable evidence for the supernatural. The supernatural exists, well, as super means above natural, above natural, above the natural world. It's not something we have access to. I can't reach up and touch the supernatural. It just, it's something that exists separate from this universe, which is a baffling uh, idea to me, but that's what they believe. That's one thing why it is so illogical to believe in a god, not only because there is no evidence for a god, but because it is a not, there is no falsifiable evidence. You can't falsify that claim. Any scientific claim made, gravity, evolution, Big Bang, is falsifiable and easily falsifiable. If it were wrong, the fact, if you make something out, like an argument, out so it's not falsifiable, then that argument already can't be taken seriously. In order for something to hold any sort of weight, it has to be testable and falsifiable, which any scientific theory that exists now, any scientific fact that exists now, follows that criteria. No supernatural or religious uh, claims follow this criteria. None! Anyone who says there is a God that factually never provides substantial evidence. They either don't provide any evidence whatsoever, they just say, oh, God exists, I know for a fact, I feel him, or they provide subpar evidence. They regurgitate these claims that are presented over and over again as if they're these mind-blowing statements and this evidence that's just you can't even fathom how amazing it is. Even though that same argument has been made hundreds of times in the last month alone and has been refuted every single time. I don't know if these Christians just don't know about these arguments or they just refuse to take the refutation presented to them, which is a more than adequate refutation. Um, I Although I have to admit, that I do like when I see more intelligent arguments presented for uh, creationism or for Christians, or for Christianity or for any religion, sorry, for um, for any religion, definitely. But when they present actually intelligent arguments, if you present an argument that just, just says, oh, I can feel God, well, that's not proof. Anyone can say they felt something and easily be deceiving people because you don't know if they actually felt that or not, and they can just be lying. And you may think, oh, well, no, no person following God would do that. Well, you never know. There are, there are fucked up people out there. But back to the topic at hand. If you so blindly follow a claim that is not testable or falsifiable, then it is open to ridicule. And you have to expect that ridicule and just accept it. So your choices are either to just sit there and accept it, you can cry or whine about it, or you can do the smart thing and question it. Go out there and find the evidence that you are so desperately looking for, for your God's existence. Prove to us atheists that your God exists. We are waiting anxiously. Instead of sitting there like, oh, well, that offends me. Go find that evidence, but question your beliefs as you do so. Make sure you take a step back and observe your claims and your beliefs and your faith from a non-indoctrinated standpoint, if that's possible. I don't know. I've never been indoctrinated. I know that I can question anything that I'm told. For a fact, I can question anything that I'm told. If for whatever reason, I wanted to question evolution, I could question it. I wouldn't have a strong case because there would be so much scientific evidence against me, but I could question it if I want, and people have. A lot of creationists, almost all creationists either question or just outright blatantly say, oh, evolution is a lie. But I question so many things in my life. One of the things, I, I know I bring up random examples about this stuff, but... Um, I'm in. I'm taking computer science. I'm actually minoring in computer information technology. 
and I'm in a computer science class right now where we're learning Java code, JavaScript. And sometimes my professor will, he'll display code on the uh, projector. And he'll say, okay, well, this is the code how to do this, you know, build a function that, that, that displays this or returns this, et cetera, et cetera. And then he'll say, okay, well, this is something that you're not able to do. It's impossible. JavaScript won't allow you to do this or your computer won't allow you to do this or yada, 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 something like that. Almost always, I keep a mental note of that. I go home and I test it. I don't have my computer with me in class, so I can't do it there. I would do it there if I could. But I go home, I get on my computer, and I build up a script to test what he says. Find some loophole or some way around it. Now, luckily, I know my professor's smart. He obviously has a degree in computer science in order to teach computer science. And so every single time, he's been right. You can't do that. But I always do that. I always question it. And so... You just you need to learn to question things. Instead of getting offended by how by these claims, question them. 